Boom. By the powers of Kazuki Takahashi, I hereby sacrifice these children's playing cards in order to summon a blue children's playing card. Come on out, magician of black chaos! Did he... did it work? I don't... Did you guys see anything happen just now? Did a magician pop out and... No? Crap. Alright, um... Okay, that's not good because I read a wiki how on how to do this today. I know this is legit. This is... this is like serious hardcore science magic right here, so... Um... Okay, you guys might want to go check your closets and, like, your back sheds tonight to make sure there's not some weird magician wearing BDSM gear out there. Um, because you don't want that guy skulking around when you're trying to sleep. It, it It's a real bitch to clean up. Um, I, I'm not kidding. Seriously, pause the video right now. You... Uh, Alright, just let me know. Keep me posted. Maybe, like, hashtag magician search 2018. But, alright, um... We'll, we'll, we'll go on with the video, but this is, this is a serious problem. I need to deal with this, like, ASAP after I'm done doing a YouTube video, obviously. Hey guys, how do you do? Feels like it's been a while since the last time we did an old Yu-Gi-Oh! Histories. I have no intention of stopping the series. Now, that's happened to me a lot, where I've started a series, and uh, after a few episodes, I'm like, eh, whatever, moving on to something else. But no, I'm I'm really happy to do this. I just, um, I got back from vacation. I wanted to get a lot of One Piece content out this past week, so that's why there was no episode last week. But here we are, back at it, and this is a big one. This is one that I'm really excited for, because we are talking about my favorite archetype of card, the Rich monster and mostly because well two reasons number one my favorite color is blue so excuse me while I put on my Ravenclaw scarf even though I'm a Hufflepuff but whatever this is a this is a Ravenclaw this is a blue day and um, also because when I was a kid growing up ritual monsters were there weren't very many of them, and even the ones that were around, they were kinda, sorta shitty. How shitty were they? Well, there's a ritual monster that's literally just a giant man-eating hamburger. So, yeah. Um, but, you know what? I actually like the traction that ritual monsters have gotten over the years. Um, the first big thing I heard about ritual monsters was a few years back when I started getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! again, really. And I heard about this archetype called Necros. And I took one look at this. I mean, look at this! Like, they're like water dragon knights or something. That's, that's awesome, right? Now, I, right around that time, I was like, man, that looks really cool. I think I'm gonna build a deck around Necros. And, uh, I looked into it. And the price of those cards were, like, ridiculously high. Like, way higher than I felt like I, I would feel comfortable spending on cards back then. Especially since I'm not competitive. So, it would just be, like, me dueling with my friends. So, I don't know. Maybe I should go back and see and check the prices of Necros. It's been a while. What do you guys think? Is it still, like, a viable archetype? Is it still a thing? I don't care. They look cool, and that's, as you can imagine, mostly what I go with here. Um, and then also, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, and I'll admit, I haven't been keeping up with Vrains, but Yusaku is, I learned later on, actually does end up using ritual monsters. I joked about that, um, I think in the first episode of this, because I was like, you know, Link monsters stole ritual monsters thunder, because Link monsters are blue, or just like a slightly different shade of blue than ritual and I made a joke about that, but then everyone corrected me. He's like, Matt, no, actually, Yusaku uses Link Monsters and Ritual Monsters now. And I'm like, shit, I need to... S Why did I stop watching Brains? I should have kept with it. But, um, yeah. So, um, this is not going to be discussing the recent developments in Ritual Monsters. Like, I'm sa like I said, I'm really happy the archetype... I shouldn't say archetype. It's really more of just, like, a type of card. Um, it's not really a specific archetype. Like, Necroz would be, like, a certain thing. Six Samurai would be an archetype. But, um... I'm happy to suffice it to say that it's gaining a lot of traction in recent years, but uh, that's not what this series is about. This series is about going back to the past, as the angry video game nerd would uh, phrase it. Um, we're going to go and take a look at some of the first ritual monsters that ever graced Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, the first ritual monsters that ever graced Yu-Gi-Oh! And, um... Yeah, I think maybe another reason why I really dug them was because there were so few of them. I really just, I felt like, 
I don't know, they were like the, the orphan child of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, here are fusions, here are effect monsters, all this crazy stuff you can do, and then here are like the ritual monsters where it's like, wah, 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 like this is Javelin Beetle. Who the hell uses Javelin Beetle in their deck, you know, or any of these guys? A lot of these I ordered recently just for the sake of this video and to live out a few um, starry-eyed nostalgia moments from my childhood, but um, okay. So Ritual Monsters first appeared in the Booster Series uh, Spell Ruler. Magic Ruler, and uh, there were only actually four in that set. There were three commons and one ultra rare. The three commons were Performance of Sword, the aforementioned Hungry Burger, and Crab Turtle, who is, well, he's, he's I, I think he's actually honestly more turtle than crab, but I don't know. Crab Turtle, Crab Turtle. Okay. Anyway, and the ultra rare was in fact relinquished, which was uh, Pegasus's ace card in his duel with Yugi. Now, I actually wasn't lucky enough to get a relinquished in uh, Magic Ruler back in the day, but because all the three other ritual monsters were all commons, as well as with the ritual spells required to summon them, I actually ended up getting a complete set of all of them, which was pretty neat. And I even remember including them in my deck, although I don't ever recall ever successfully summoning one of them. Um, and But even with relinquished, it didn't really matter much because Relinquished was part of the Pegasus starter deck that was released. So if you had like 10 bucks on you, or if you made your parents buy it for you, you could end up getting Relinquished pretty easily. Same thing with Black Luster Soldier, who is a... Uh, where's Black Luster Soldier? You have to bear with me here. I have a bunch of ritual cards and their spells in front of me right now. Um, Black Luster Soldier, you could actually pick up in the second Yugi starter deck, Yugi Evolution. Little side note there is that for some reason it was depicted in the box art that the Black Luster Soldier was in fact a normal monster, not a ritual monster like he is. Even more of a side note going down the rabbit hole here, and I'm going to discuss this later when I do a, a video on the, the rarest card in Yu-Gi-Oh! period. There is actually, I'm not even kidding here, there is a version of the Black Luster Soldier that is a normal monster, but that's not even the weird part. It's that the card itself is actually not printed on cardstock paper like all this. It's actually printed on like metal. Like it's a like a steel card that depicts the Black Luster Soldier as a normal monster, and there's only one of those in existence, and that is a contender for being one of the rarest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I hesitate even using the word card, because it's not really made out of the same material, but yeah, fun fact there. Um, so you can get your hands on those ritual cards fairly easily uh, back then with the like Relinquished and Black Luster Soldier with the starter decks, and I remember even with uh, Pegasus's starter deck, it actually got released before Yu-Gi's uh, duel with him in the anime, so so I remember getting Pegasus' starter deck, looking at Relinquished, and being like, what the f*** is this thing? <laughs> this is weird. He's like some eye dude, and he's got like this weird like mouth stomach thing, and then later on, Pegasus is dueling Kaiba and Yugi, and he's using Toon Monsters, and there was also no Toon Monsters in the Pegasus starter deck, go figure, but, um, you know, he's using Toons, and I'm like, what is this thing? And then finally, in the last two episodes of the duel, when they're going into the Shadow Realm, and Pegasus scraps all of the Toon Monsters and starts using the Spellcaster, like, really messed up, dark, you know, demented eyeball shit, because he's got the Millennium Eye, Millennium Eye um, that's when he pulls out Relinquish. He's like, quite a looker, eh? And I'm like, oh, that's where it ties back. Relinquished even also got a uh, Link summoning counterpart, like a retrained version of him. And it makes sense when you consider his name is, in fact, Relinquished. Get it? Link. 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 Who's that monster card? It's Chakra. Chakra. Anyway, getting back to the Magic Ruler, or I guess if you want to be wrong, Spell Ruler Booster Pack, it was released to North America on September 16th, 2002, and this was pretty early on in Yu-Gi-Oh!, so right when I was starting to get into it, so you know, it really felt like a... Wait a second. September 16th, 2002? September 16th, 2018? That's creepy. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. That's creepy. Okay, so uh, 
yeah, I guess this video is also in honor of the, the 16th anniversary of the North American release of, of Magic Ruler. All right, well, anyway, getting back to the original three, we have Performance of Sword, Crab Turtle, and uh, Hungry Burger. And when I first saw these cards, I was immediately stricken because they were colored differently than the other ones. Um, but also, I, I felt like because there was like this extra summoning condition, like you had to throw out the ritual spell in order to summon one, and you had to sacrifice a certain number of monsters, uh, my imagination kind of really kicked in with these cards, and I started to create, like, little stories behind them. Now, card lore is nothing new. In fact, you can go on Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki, and there's, like, a whole section for that. Maybe someday I'll do a whole card lore video about the Six Samurai or something, but, um, so, for instance, like, Performance of Sword. And, and by the way, all three of these uh, ritual monsters, they suck. They do. Like, they're, they don't have any effect. They're a bitch to summon. Even when you do, their attack really isn't that great. Crab turn Turtle is the best at 2550, so you know, that one's okay, but Performance of Sword, 1950, it's just not really going to do much for you, even if you manage to summon them. Um, also, all uh, ritual monsters, at least the early ritual monsters back then, seem to have this gimmick of having attack points that ended in 50. Uh, not all of them, because, you know, Blackluster Soldier and Relinquished has zero, which I, in fact, think is... I don't think it's the first card that has zero attack points. It might, in fact, have been, but it was one of the first. Um, but a lot of them ended in 50 for whatever reason. But with Performance of Sword, I actually, like, created this narrative in my head. Like, the woman on the uh, the card art for Commencement Dance, which is the ritual spell, like, she's part of this tribe of women that, like, do these dance moves with blades in order to, like, fight. And, um, you know, she has just turned 18, and then she's performing this dance and becoming, like, the high priestess or some shit, and that's the card, Performance of Sword. Then you have this guy right here, the hash-slinging slasher ogre demon-looking dude who's, um, you know, frying up a hamburger, you know, he's the he's the demented hamburglar chef. Roar! And so uh, the card lore I came up with him was actually kind of dark, like, he uh, committed, like, he was a serial killer and came up with, like, I was a big fan of, like, Friday the 13th and, like, slasher movies back when I was a kid, so I'd be like, oh yeah, this is some, like, serial killer that slaughtered all all of his victims, then he turned into, like, this demented, like, twisted demon, and now he's, like, a hamburger chef, and so he's frying up this, this creature, and it became the Hungry Burger, and then Crab Turtle, I couldn't come up with anything for Crab Turtle, really, he's, he's a Crab Turtle, it's, that's, there you go, but it didn't stop there, I knew, in fact, there were other ritual monsters out there that just didn't exist in the TCG yet, uh, for one thing, I played a game called Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the PlayStation 1, it's one of my favorite games for that console, and I actually did a full Let's Play of it back in 2015, I'll put a card up here if you're interested in reliving those days, but, um, in Forbidden Memories, there were a lot of cards that were actually not even, they were like ritual cards in the game, but they weren't really ritual cards like in real life. There were other cards they just created for the game. By the way, why is Psycho Puppet not a real card? Look at this deliciously demented little guy. He is screaming to be a real card. But um, yeah, there were cards like uh, uh, Chakra and Gate Guardian was a ritual in, in the game, and uh, there was uh, Fiend's Hand Mirror, which was a ritual card. So there were a lot of these weird ritual monsters, so I knew they existed from that game. And also I knew they existed because of the catalog. Yes, this is the catalog I had when I was a little kid. And at the very back of it, see, they go through all the booster packs first, but at the very back... They have the tournament packs. This this book is very old. It's literally falling apart. But they have the tournament packs, okay? And as you would imagine, as you could figure, the tournament packs were not released to the general public. You would go to a Yu-Gi-Oh! event, a tournament or something like a Nationals, and they would hand out these booster packs to the people at the tournament. So it was like a very limited edition kind of thing. And, um, like, I don't even know why they really bothered putting them in the card catalog, because it, all it did was tease me with cards that I could never get my hands on as a kid. And there were a lot of ritual cards included in these tournament packs, one of which was a uh, Doku Rider, which is like this demon skeleton dude riding on a freaking motorcycle, and his ritual spell is the revival of Doku Rider. Then there's Skull Guardian, which you need Novox's prayer to summon. It has this woman in a red hood, like some sort of riding red hooded woman, I don't know, performing a prayer to summon the Skull Guardian to like protect her family or some shit, maybe. Once again, 2050 attack. Isn't that weird? 2050 attack. 
2500 defense. Very strange card, Skull Guardian. But uh, by far, my favorite, at least the one that caught my eye, and the one ritual monster that I always wanted when I was a kid... Um, and there were other ones, too, that I ended up getting my hands on, like, here's Zara the Mant, and, uh, the, uh, the Javelin Beetle Pact and Javelin Beetle, there's, uh, oh, oh, War Lion Ritual and the Super War Lion, I'm gonna come back to these guys in a second, because these, this card actually appeared in the anime, and I wanna bring that up, um, there was Fortress Whale, so, like, but one card out of all of them that really caught my eye was a card called Garma Sword. And I don't know why. Uh, Garma Sword was in Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, and I always remembered it was a very striking appearance of a card. This six-armed demon carrying these giant scimitars, and it would just, like, slash at you. But I really just liked the artwork, and I always wanted a Garma Sword. But, you know, all I could get was just looking at the card in the card catalog. That's all I could get. I could never get my hands on a, car on, on a, on a Garma Sword, or a Fortress Whale, for that matter. So, uh, in preparation for this video, I decided, you know what, I was a child back then. I didn't have any money of my own. I had an allowance, and my I, would, I usually have to ask or beg, really, my dad or my mom whenever we went to Walmart. Like, could you give me five bucks to go buy a booster pack at the children's card game that I want to play? Um, and they would usually do it, so they were, they were good parents there. Uh, they indulged my habit quite a bit. Um, but I, I'm an adult now. I have my own jobs, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm getting rather successful at doing this, so you know what, I think it's finally time I did it. I'm gonna get my hands on a Garma Sword card! <laughs> yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, Garma Sword and Fortress Whale and Skull Guardian and Dokuro Rider, they're... They're pretty damn expensive. Now, it's not a bad thing, because I was able to get my hands on on quite a few, like Javelin Beetle, Zara the Mant was one I always wanted. This was a card that was used by Bandit Keith when he was brainwashed by Merrick uh, in the anime. So, I ended up getting my hands on a lot of ritual cards that I always wanted, but I think there's a few that are always going to be out of my reach. And a few other things about ritual monsters. Uh, I, I guess I should probably talk about how they're summoned at this point. I, everybody knows how it works, right? It, just a really big pain in the ass. In fact, part of the reason why I think the synchro monsters became a thing was just like, hey, let's let's kind of make, like, ritual monsters, but let's make them easier to summon. So, instead of trying to grab a very specific spell card in your deck, let's just make tuners a thing, you know? And, and like, just make the, like, the levels add up and let's just have them instead of actually... Because the thing with the big drawback with ritual monsters, especially back then, was that, you know, the extra deck was the fusion deck. Okay, you didn't have an extra deck where you can throw all these like XZs and synchros, they didn't exist yet. All you had is a fusion deck. So, in order to get a, a ritual monster on the field, let's just use Black Luster Soldier for an example. You had to not only have the uh, Black Luster Ritual in your hand that you could play, you also had to have Black Luster Soldier in your hand. You had to draw it from your deck, or you had to search it somehow. You couldn't just, you know, throw out this card and then extra deck it, okay? Um, you also had to have a certain number of cards on the field whose level equal to or added up to the Ritual Monster. So, I guess that's kind of a good thing. Like, that's a positive when it comes to Synchros, where with Synchros you have to have the, like, if, if you're trying to Synchro summon level 8, it has to be equal to level 8 exactly. At least with Ritual Monsters, you know, you can go over if you wanted to um, but still like the sheer number of cards you had to end up getting you know from your deck it was just a pain in the ass so in Yugi's case when he was dueling Mai and he got let's be honest here ridiculously lucky bullshit draws and he's just like I need to summon the black luster soldier oh good I drew him here you go he used uh, Gaia the fierce knight and Karibo and I think also Griffor was in there somewhere but then he activated black luster ritual and then summoned black luster soldier who himself is you know actually getting uh, rather popular with his super soldier counterpart uh, they gave him the they gave him like a uh, serum X or whatever the hell they gave uh, uh, Captain America I forget what the actual name of the uh, formula was called comic book nerds. Come on, help me out. What was the name of the Captain America serum? Uh, but because I think it has like, a, I, I want to say it's just Super Soldier Serum, but it probably has a very specific name. But yeah, they buffed him up with that, and now he's the Super Soldier. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's, uh, 
and and then of course, oh, and then of course during his duel with Pegasus a few episodes later, that's the big one where he pulls out the black magic ritual and summons Magician of Black Chaos. The thing that I love about this, especially with uh, Yugi, is that um, he uses these cards and he like never uses them again afterwards. You ever notice that? Like all throughout Duelist Kingdom, it's just like it to the point where Yugi kind of forgot. Oh, by the way, I have Black Luster Soldier in my deck. Oh, by the way, I have Magician of Black Chaos in my deck. Well, it's a good thing I can break it out now when I'm dueling Pegasus and he never shows up again. This card, it is so bittersweet to finally own this thing. It really is. Um, because look at him. I mean, it, just, he's badass. Look at his design. He's got, like, blue skin and the purple accents and, and his name, Magician of Black Chaos. He's got an epic mane of hair. His scepter looked really cool and different. Um, it took so long for this card to get released, just in the TCG alone, let alone making it to an English release, after they, of course, censored all the pentagrams on him, because, mm -mm. Oh, by the way, speaking of another big, um, this is just a lot of, like, string of trivia notes. Oh, by the way, side note, by the way, fun fact, um, another big censor that they had for a ritual monster came from the, uh, the ritual spell for Chakra, uh, which was the resurrection of Chakra, which has this young lady right here, I guess, being swallowed up by the grass evil dead style to bring back chakra which is this weird demon scythe blade cyclops thing but um yeah in the original they uh she was rather uh exposed if you know what i mean yeah and she had it going on okay but um yeah magician of black chaos really cool also ties back into dark magician girl's effect but um yeah so it's cool to finally own this thing but um, it would be cooler if I owned it when I was a kid, because this card was so freaking sweet. I'm just gonna set you there next to Yugi. So, uh, something else I wanted to bring up is involving Super Warline. Alright, so, uh, remember the Virtual World arc? Uh, not the Noah shit, like, the first time they went to the Virtual World. Like, right after Duelist Kingdom, where Kaiba developed this, you know, virtual world, and then he got back from Duelist Kingdom and then trusted the Big Five to hook him into it because he's kind of an idiot that way, and uh, he gets trapped there, and then Yugi and Joey and Mokuba and Mai have to go in to rescue him. Okay, well, they go into this virtual space, and they're walking through a town, and they see a card shop, okay? And they see the Super War Lion card in the shop, but it's like a ridiculous amount of like GP that they need to buy it, and Joey's like, well, how much do we got? Because we just took out all those zombies in the graveyard. And it's like five. They have five GP. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa, 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 so this is getting all too real to my, like, little kid self. It was like, wait, so you're telling me all of the good cards in this, uh, game that Kaiba created cost an exorbitant, almost impossible-to-reach amount of GP, and the in-game grinding mechanics yield so little from each encounter, you would literally have to waste days in order to just get one good card. Hmm. What does this remind me of? 999,999 star chips for the summon skull. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, in the game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, there was a password system where you could go in and you could type in the eight-digit code on the bottom of every Yu-Gi-Oh! card and you can exchange in-game star chips for the card. Sounds like a good system, don't it? And you would expect that, oh, the stronger cards would cost more, but if you grind enough in the game, you can get good cards. No! No! It was bullshit, and I will never let this slide! The most you could get from each duel in that game was five star chips. If you managed to just S-rank floor your opponent, you would get five star chips. There were some cards like the Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Dark Magician and the Summon Skull in the game that you could type the password in for, and the amount of star chips that needed to summon them to, to buy them were nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. That was the game flipping you off that's what it was you couldn't get it that's the that that is so that that really spoke to me though when i saw that i'm like wow and then and then you start thinking kaiba designed that game and so you're like wait whoa whoa 
So did Kaiba invent the whole freemium aspect where it's like, ha, I'm going to invent this game. All the good cards cost a ridiculous amount of money. You could spend days in-game grinding to get the amount of money just to buy one good card. Or you could spend 10 real dollars in, in, in you know, real life currency, and I'll give you 10,000 game currencies. Like, did Kaiba invent the freemium concept? If there was going to be anybody, it would have been him. I'm just saying. That's crazy, freaky, weird. Like, in games nowadays, it's the same thing. Like, with Fortnite or whatever. Like, wow, that... That's freaky. That's weird. That's creepy, too. So, uh, yeah, there were a few other ritual monsters. They didn't really appear that much more in the anime, now that I'm thinking about it. After Duelist Kingdom, I think they were used a few more times. Like, I, I mentioned Zara the Mant uh, was used when uh, Bandit Keith dueled Yugi. And then, uh, later on, during Millennium World, of course, uh, uh, Bakora's spirit was Zork, the Dark One. And Zork, in real life, is, in fact, a ritual monster. But it worked a little differently because, you know, it's, it's the anime. It was Millennium World and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it doesn't really show up that much more in the anime. Um, but uh, as for other ritual monsters, eventually we got uh, the Masked Beast that came out a few boosters later. Uh, there was um, uh, Reshef, the Ancient One. That was pretty cool. Lycanthrope, which is like a werewolf kind of dude. Um, so there, there was a few others. There was Demise, the King of Armageddon. And, uh, oh, there was uh, the, uh, the uh, counterpart, the Queen of Armageddon as well. I'm forgetting her name. And um, you needed a, a ritual spell, literally really called End of the World in order to ritual summon both of them. So th those were pretty cool cards. I never owned those, but those were neat. Um, it's just that, yeah, at the end of the day, ritual monsters... They really weren't worth it, you know? Like, Magician of Black Chaos is cool and all, but the trouble that you would have to go to to summon him, you know, manage to draw not only him, but also his ritual, and also happen to have the the uh, appropriate monsters on the field, and then throw down the ritual and then summon him. I mean, yeah, he's got 2,800 attack. It's not bad, but no effect, nothing, other than just making your opponent be like, Wow, that card looks really cool! I'm gonna kill it now with this trap card, you know, like, aside from that, that's all that would happen, but, yeah, ritual monsters have always been my favorite, let me know what your favorite ritual monster is, uh, in the comments below, and, uh, if Necroz is still a viable thing, because I really want to make that deck happen if I was gonna switch over from, uh, Six Samurai to get something else, but, um, yeah, really cool concept, it's just something that's just kinda, you know, died out in the early game. Now, currently, right now, I have no idea, but considering it's popular enough to be featured in Vrains and in the current anime for the first time since, like, the first season, and, uh, there's a lot of other archetypes that based around, uh, rituals, I know Necroz isn't the only one, I know there are others, so right now it's maybe getting some success with certain archetypes, but, yeah, back then, they were just kind of cards that look cool. And they were really rare and hard to get your hands on in a lot of respects. But beyond that, not really that great. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, for next week, I don't know what I have planned. I have to. I have a bunch of them. Oh, Jinzo. I think next week I'll do my Jinzo video. Jinzo is probably my single favorite card when I was a kid growing up. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun to talk about Jinzo. Yeah, that's what we're doing, Jinzo. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Teching, signing out. Wait, Psychic is a type now? When did that happen?